So by now you've hopefully watched our DPS tier list and you're dying to know how healers will rank in 9.1. Will Mistweaver finally be a top tier healer? Will Holy still be better than Disc? You have questions, we have answers. So stick around because we will be forecasting the season 2 meta, breaking down the biggest changes that will be affecting every healer in 9.1. Keep in mind that this is just our prediction. We consulted with some of the best players in the world, taking their collective input in order to give you our healer forecast. And before we get into it, we have a question for you. What's your goal for Season 2? Are you looking to push rating in Arena? Is there a specific title you're after? Or maybe you just want to crush some BGs? Let us know your plans in the comments below. And while you're at it, consider checking out skillcap.com slash wow, where we have everything you need to achieve your goals in Season 2. Our website features class courses as well as exclusive commentaries directly from pro players. You will learn the fundamentals of your class while getting insight into the minds of some of the best players in the world. You can subscribe for as little as $4.99 a month, and we offer a money-back guarantee if you don't gain at least 250 rating. If you're serious about wanting to up your game, skillcap.com slash wow is the place for you. History repeats itself, and nothing is more familiar than seeing Resto Druid on the S tier. Oddly enough, Resto Druids didn't see many changes in 9.1. In fact, the Druid class as a whole received some major defensive nerfs, with Frenzied Regeneration getting nerfed by 15%, Ooze's Frictionless Coding getting reduced by 50% in PvP, and the Well Honed Instincts Conduit getting a huge cooldown increase. Necrolord Druids were pretty much immortal in Season 1, having the best self-heal in the game with Adaptive Swarm and Frenzied Regeneration, and these new nerfs certainly do hurt, so how do we possibly rank them so high? Well, for one, Kleptomania is being removed from Fire and Frost Mages and will now be Arcane only. This spell was a massive counter to Resto Druid teams, and with its removal, Druids will be way better into most Mage setups. On top of that, every class that Druids typically play with received pretty huge buffs. Warlock got massive buffs for both specs, Frost Mages got damage increases, Assassination Rogues are looking stronger, and heck, even Warriors of all things are looking better. All of these things are massive indirect buffs to Resto Druids, who tend to do best with classes that are really good at avoiding damage or are tanky enough to offset the lack of strong team defenses that Resto Resto Druids are missing. And these indirect buffs don't even take into account that Resto finally has a good PvP talent against Caster Cleaves, with Keeper of the Grove being added as a new option. Before the patch, Resto PvP talents were mostly focused on denying melee DPS. This new addition will finally give a good option into Affliction Warlocks and Shadow Priests and might even make Druids more competitive in RBGs. On top of this, High Winds has been reworked for all Druid specs and will now cause Cyclone to leave a 30% healing reduction on targets. This will line up perfectly with the increase in healing reduction effects and might actually make Druid one of the best offensive healers. But Resto Druids can't have all the fun this season because joining them on the S tier are Resto Shamans. Is this Mists of Pandaria all over again? Druids and Shamans back on the S tier? Who could have possibly predicted this? Anyway, just like Resto Druids, Shamans didn't really see that many changes in the patch. A new PvP talent was added called Living Tide, which will give them a more consistent cooldown option, which is something the spec really benefits from since it lacks strong consistent throughput. On top of that, every Shaman spec is getting a new talent called Unleash Shield, which is by far the most broken for Resto Shaman since it will cause water shields to spawn a whirlpool that reduces enemy healing by 40%. Yeah, you heard that right. Resto Shamans will have a mortal strike. But the most important change in 9.1 is that staves will no longer appear in the Great Vault. Pour one out to all the wasted conquest in Season 1. We're kidding, of course, that's actually not the most important change, because what matters more than everything we mentioned is that Resto Shaman comps are also getting huge buffs in Season 2. Just like the bump of Druid to S tier, Shamans are also getting elevated through their symbiotic relationship with other classes. Feral Druids, DKs, and Ret Paladins were all buffed in 9.1, meaning that many of the best comps available to Shamans will be even better, especially since Resto Druids will be popular and Purge is one of the best counters to the entire spec. So it's time for history to repeat itself, because once again, Druids and Shamans have found themselves as the best healers in Arena. There's a lot of hype around Mistweaver monks this patch since they will be getting enough buffs to take them out of the lower tier since our last update. 9.1 introduces some new PvP talents with Peaceweaver, Dematerialize, and Thunderous Focus T, which help address some of the glaring problems facing the spec during Season 1. Peaceweaver will likely be a default option against Affliction Warlock teams for preventing damage on UA dispels, and might make Mistweaver one of the default healers in RBG. 
RPGs. Dematerialize will help address some of the fragility of the spec, which gets super punished by stun setups, especially by comps like Rogue Mage. Eminence is reworked, now allowing monks to port while stunned, once again giving more survival tools into stun based setups. This gives the spec two different defensive talents to deal with getting killed in stun setups, and running both of these two talents together might actually make them immortal. One place monks might do noticeably better is 2v2 considering the spec got huge damage increases across the board. The 2's bracket is definitely damage centric, and these changes might be enough to put their damage in line with other healers. Unfortunately, these changes alone probably won't make monks the best healer in 9.1, but will help them fall to the relative power level of the rest of the playing field. Monks will probably still struggle in the throughput department, which was also one of their biggest problems last season. Lacking sustained healing outside of major defensive cooldowns might be an issue, especially with the increase of healing reduction effects that came with the patch, but we will just have to see how the meta develops in a few weeks. Joining monks on the A tier are Disciplined Priests, who will fundamentally change this patch. Last season, one huge strength to disc in Arena was Ultimate Radiance, a talent that gives them a massive instant cast AoE heal at the cost of a ton of mana. This PvP talent was nerfed in 9.1, and now is much weaker as an instant cast heal. So what was changed that keeps Disc Priest on the A tier? For one, Atonement healing is now 20% stronger in PvP, being removed from the Trinity PvP talent, but now Trinity will have increased crit chance on damage spells. This means two things. For one, with the nerf to Radiance, Priest is shifting away from AoE burst healing to more sustained healing throughput. And secondly, Trinity might not be a default PvP talent anymore, potentially opening up the slot for more options. One option that is looking promising is the newly added Inner Light and Shadow, which gives Priest two swappable buffs, one to reduce the mana cost of spells, and the other to increase damage and atonement healing. This also comes with a massive buff to the Sins of the Many talent, which was previously nerfed by 66% in PvP. With this talent unnerfed, Priests will do 8% more damage per atonement target, causing their spells to do even more healing. All of these changes together solidify the move away from Radiance and helps redefine Disciplined Priest as the damage-based healer, something that it wasn't able to live up to last patch. Another new option is Improved Mass Dispel, which honestly doesn't seem that important outside of a few really specific matchups. But all in all, Disciplined Priest is looking pretty good on paper, but one thing that might hurt it in Season 2 will be the increased popularity of Death Knights, who were one of the biggest issues for the spec last patch. Fortunately, Holy is one spec that can deal with DK damage, which is one reason why it's joining Disc on the A tier. There were massive changes to many of Holy's existing PvP talents, most notably to Cardinal Mending, Miracle Worker, and Greater Fade. Alongside this was a buff to Flash of Light healing by 15% in PvP. Cardinal Mending previously healed players for 10% of their max HP and ignored MS and dampening, but now will just increase the amount of healing done by Palm while also increasing its bounce range. This makes it worse for single target healing, but might make it an exceptionally strong AoE healing tool since it will have 50% more healing on each bounce. One change that went a bit under the radar is a redesigned symbol of hope, which will now grant 60 seconds of defensive cooldown reduction to nearby party members. This is completely game changing for some classes, and here we have a list of the important spells it affects in PvP. Some of these abilities, like Blur and Bark Skin, already have a 60 second cooldown, meaning symbols of hope could be used to instantly reset them once they're used. This seems a bit broken, especially in RBGs, where it could be used to reset CDs on your entire raid. The nerf to Greater Fade by one second will definitely hurt the spec slightly, but collectively all of these changes seem to put Holy Priest in a similar spot as last season. Holy Priests will continue to be really good if the meta winds up being fast, since the spec is based on having snappy cooldowns combined with strong burst healing to help control early game momentum. The healer that took the most damage from 9.1 was Holy Paladin, who might actually fall behind other healers this patch. Paladin suffered a massive damage decrease overall, with many of their offensive abilities receiving fairly significant nerfs, including an 8% reduction to all damaging spells. This was due mostly to their strength in PvE, where Holy Paladin damage was comparable and sometimes even better than actual DPS classes. In some potential class redesigns, Flash of Light healing was buffed by 20% in addition to a change to Infusion of Light, which will now grant Holy Power instead of increasing Holy Light healing. These changes come on the back of a redesign of some existing PvP talents, which seem to encourage Holy Paladins to use Flash of Light more often, most notably due to changes to Divine Favor and Light's Grace, both of which are skewed to include more Flash of Light healing in your rotation. 
but more testing will be needed since Holy Light healing was increased by 20% in PvP combat, which gives them more motivation to continue using their mana efficient heal, while balancing it out with inefficient faster heals. One class-wide addition to Paladin PvP talents include Judgments of the Pure, which will cause Judgment to dispel magic, disease, and poison effects from friendly players. This has the potential to be a default talent option into Shadow Priest and Mage teams since it can be used to continuously dispel dots and CC. These changes together make it really hard to predict where Blizzard is going with the design of Holy Paladin, whose main weakness so far has been their mana management, due in part to their MP5 being the worst out of all healers. These changes seem to conflict with their ability to solve that issue, making Holy Paladin a massive question mark going into Season 2. At its core, the strength of Paladin is still the same. It has multiple highly efficient cooldowns that allow them to push in with their teammates and win fast-paced exchanges. So if the meta in 9.1 winds up being faster, then Holy Paladins will be in a good spot. If not, and games start going to deep dampening, Holy Paladins will be up against a massive mana wall. Right now, we can only speculate on how 9.1 will shape up, but we anticipate that Druids and Shamans will be the best healers this season. Neither one of these specs saw huge changes with their own design, but they will be elevated by buffs to some of their complementary classes, with caster buffs favoring Druids and melee buffs helping Shamans. Mistweaver Monks will be joining both Priest specs on the A tier, with all three of these healers getting major redesigns in the patch. Although they all seem promising, each spec on this tier still has their own glaring weaknesses that will continue to affect their performance in the new meta. Which is why forecasting the strength of Holy Paladins is so difficult, because their primary weakness was completely ignored by the patch. All in all, the strength of any class, especially healers, requires us to consider the entire ecosystem of class balance. Today's list was just a forecast of what is to come, so some of our predictions could be a bit off. In any case, be sure to subscribe for more 9.1 content, and if you want to get really ahead of the competition, be sure to check out skillcap.com slash wow, where we will be updating our guides for the new season. As always, thanks for watching, hope you have a wonderful season too.